Hi there, you are watching a video of piping systems in industrial plants. Energy conservation is a high priority in any industrial sector. This section explains how energy savings can be achieved through thermal insulation. Thermal insulation is used to reduce heat transfer from the fluid contained in the piping system or equipment to the environment or vice versa. Cold line insulation helps to reduce condensation on the outside of the piping system, which in turn helps to reduce corrosion. There are three types of heat transfer fundamentally – conduction, convection and radiation. All three types act in a piping system simultaneously. However, it is usual to consider only heat conduction in the insulation element since it is normal governs the calculation. The causes which motivate the insulation of industrial piping and equipment are the conservation of thermal energy by reducing the heat interchange between the piping system or equipment and the environment protecting people against a possible burn caused by accidental contact with very hot or very cold surfaces. Additionally, piping systems are often insulated for temperature control to avoid condensation and to protect a fluid against freezing. For a material to be a good insulator, we must look for the following characteristics to be a bad thermal conductor, to withstand the temperature, the operating temperature of the system, it should have mechanical resistance, humidity resistance, personal protection, and it must be economical. Commercially, the forms that can be found in the market are the following, plates or sheets, blankets, cylindrical sections, robes and stripes, tailored sides blankets, and spray foam. The basic principle of any thermal insulation is to provide resistance to the heat flow. For this, the insulation material must be efficient against the three forms of heat transfer mentioned earlier. For flat surfaces, the heat transfer from the surface to the environment can be expressed as shown on the screen, where Q is the heat transfer ratio, A is the flow area, T1 is the hot temperature, T2 is the ambient temperature, X is the insulation thickness, K is the thermal conductivity and 1 divided F is the surface resistance factor. It can be concluded that the greater the thickness of the insulation, the lower the heat transfer rate. In other words, the greater the thickness, the more efficient the insulation. The ratio of heat transfer in a cylindrical pipe to the environment can be expressed as shown on the screen, where Q is the heat transfer ratio, K is the thermal conductivity, L is the pipe length, TI is the pipe operating temperature, TS is the ambient temperature, RI is the pipe radius, R0 is the insulated surface radio. Since heat transfer through insulation is of the conductive type, there are cases in which increasing the thickness results in an increase in heat transfer. In other words, increasing the thickness it is not always the best solution. It is neither possible nor economical to install thermal insulation such as to avoid all heat losses. The objective of insulation is to reduce heat transfer, 
not to eliminate it. The effective thickness is the insulation thickness which results in the least heat transfer with the least possible investments in insulation. It is the intersection of both curves, heat losses and cost in insulation, as seen in the figure. The insulation for hot piping systems is the most used of all types of insulation in industrial plants. Next, we will see the characteristics of insulation for hot pipes. Equipment and piping systems operating above 55 degrees Celsius must be thermally insulated for the reasons mentioned earlier for heat conservation and so that the external surfaces in contact with people do not exceed this temperature limit. An important aspect to consider is the freezing point of the line. Should the fluid inside a pipeline remain static for lengthy periods of time and the ambient temperature is below the freezing temperature of the fluid, In some cases, when there is a risk of for any materials used or selected, it is recommended not to exceed 90% of the maximum working temperature indicated on the manufacturer's datasheet. Most materials used are calcium silicate, mineral or rock wool, fiberglass and expanded polyesterine. One of the most widely used ways to insulate pipes are preformed cylindrical sections. This facilitates the installation considerably. On the screen we are seeing an example of calcium silicate as an insulating material. In this case we see an example of rock wool, perhaps the most used insulating material for all piping systems in industrial plants. And finally, an example of preformed sections of fiberglass. The thickness selection is very simple. We work with the table with the piping operating temperature and the pipe diameter. Then, the recommended thickness is obtained. 